Getting started in woodworking is not easy. It's fun, but it's certainly not easy. It's a learning process, one that we've all been on. I was having a good think about what the biggest challenges were when I first started out. And I have to say it would take more than one video to go over all of them, but the biggest and the one that took me the longest and the most frustration to get past was very simple. It was just cutting square. No matter what tools you start out with and whatever projects you're going on, you need to be able to cut square in two directions as well, not just one. If you only have hand tools available to you or that's the route you decide to go down, the lucky thing is there are jigs and tools that will help you to cut square. For instance, a simple mitre block. Not only is it keeping you square in one direction, it's also keeping you square in the other. That's brilliant. You can even take it one step further like I did. If you use the Japanese pull saws, which give you the smaller kerf, then you might want to set up something like this that will help you stay square with the kerf so there's less wiggle room, unlike what you would get in a wider kerf from a standard saw. And once you're well enough practiced, you might not even need these. Maybe just have a bench hook and go for it. But what happens, Mark, if I want to go down the route of handheld power tools? Well, I'm glad you asked, because there are lots of simple or more complicated ways that you can get your handheld power tools to work for you. Now, these come in many, many different shapes and sizes, corded, cordless, so on and so forth. I love this one. This is one of the first power tools that I got, and it is a jack of all trades. It does everything I've ever asked of it, and it does it well. But it hasn't all been plain sailing. Getting the cut square was the biggest challenge that I had. And I'm gonna quickly talk you through the different ways that I've gone down and where I've come up with the best solution. The first solution is this, a very simple speed square. If you haven't got one in your workshop, you should go out and get one. I'll pop a link down in the description for you because I genuinely think that this is one of the top 10 most useful tools you will ever buy. It works really simply. And not only can you use it with the circular saw, but if you are partial to the jigsaw, it will also help you get straight cuts with that as well. Now the speed square itself is not very difficult to learn. Basically, you've got an edge with two lips on it and one of them hooks against the side of whatever piece you're gonna cut, giving you that 90 degree angle. And then that leaves you to be able to run the table saw nudged up against the speed square across the piece of wood you're trying to cut. This will ensure you are square that way, but also the base plate of the circular saw will ensure that you are square that way. Perfect. However, would I use this method for more detailed carpentry? Some furniture building, for instance? No. This is good for speed, it's in the title, and for doing some rough cuts or if you wanted to cut something close to length and then square it off with a different method. You could tie this in very nicely with a shooting board for instance where you use your hand plane to actually get the perfect dimension. So where does that leave you as far as what will give you 90 degree cuts that you can trust for more intricate joinery? Box making for instance. I'm glad you asked. This lump of 2x4s, MDF and 5 mil plywood. No, don't like that. Is, believe it or not, what I used for about two years to get square cuts. You've got a track at the top and you've got a guide at the bottom. Then you've got your cut line right across the middle. So long as the piece that you are trying to cut is up against the edge and the cut line, theoretically you're going to get a straight square cut. But it relies on a couple of things. One, are the rails that the circular saw is going to sit on are they parallel to the base? Because that's what the wood's gonna sit on. And then finally, is this board that the circular saw is running butted up against, is that 90 degrees to the guide at the bottom? There's a simple way to test it. You could put a speed square up against the back, lock it in, and then check if your cut line is 90 degrees to that speed square. As for the tracks being square to the bottom, well, they both run across what was one single piece of wood before I cut through it. So in theory, that should be good enough. However, 
if you're doing something that's a little bit finer work, you might want to use aluminium bars, something that's got a little bit more of an accuracy to it. Or, there is a better way. Anybody who's watched my last couple of videos will have seen this pop up a few times. It is almost identical to what I used to use. The only difference is you've got metal runners for more accuracy, slightly smaller base, easier to carry, and theoretically it's going to be more accurate. It works on the same principles. Your circular saw runs across the two metal tracks and then you've got your cut line which is developed down the middle that you can reference off. It does have a few extra features that I didn't manage to put onto mine. I'll show you them now. There is a wing on each side. Now, this is level with the base. So once you've got both wings out, you can support a longer board much, much easier. And you can also put a stop block on. So if you want to cut everything at the same dimensions, just clamp your stop block on and away you go. You can clamp to here. I actually even clamp to the arm itself with a larger block and you can get repeatable cuts. And that is really, really helpful for speed and accuracy. You've got the two T-tracks on the side and they give you a really cool mitre gauge with adjustability that you can then lock in at different angles so you can do mitre cuts. You get these two cool little clamps. They go into the T-tracks and they are seriously heavy duty because it takes a heck of a lot to move them up and down. And the beauty of this, if you're working with a slightly smaller piece, you can pop it in, clamp it down, make sure it's flush against the back, and then you are hands-free to guide your circular saw and that is gonna be safety improved and accuracy improved. Admittedly, it's a bit tricky using the two together. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. As a general point that I find at this stage, I have to say it is super mobile and I have actually attached it to my saw horses outside so that I can keep a lot of the dust out of my workshop. And the fact that it is so small just makes life so much easier. Just a quick one. If you guys are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. Now, back to the video. Most circular saws will have too much depth for it. All you've got to do is adjust the height of the blade using the levers and the adjustability that it has. I have found that four on the Makita is just about right. So once you pop it down onto the rails, you can see that the blade is running into the groove that you cut the first time you used it. You can get your square, pop it against the guide rail at the back, and you can run your eye along to see, is it square with the back? So then you're pretty much ready to go. But is your circular saw itself square? Because obviously you're referencing everything off the base of your circular saw. But what if the base is not perpendicular to the blade? Something that, again, I, I confess I hadn't even thought about. And it's very easy to check. Obviously take the battery out before you do any of this. And then move the blade guard. And you don't want to be referencing off a tooth because it will not look square. And then just check. I would check both edges as well, just to be on the safe side, if you can get enough of a reference off it. Once you're sure that everything on your circular saw is square, then you're ready to test the crosscut station out. And that's a really simple thing to do. Just get a piece of wood that you know one side is square, pop it against the back fence and cut it. When you are checking that square cut to see if it is a square cut, in fact, use the same side that you referenced off the back to check the front. Let me show you. Oh yeah, and I'm only gonna do one cut inside because it doesn't matter how much dust extraction you put on a circular saw, it still blends wood and it sprays it all out the front when the extraction is at the back. So I'm only gonna do it once because I only cleaned the shed last week. Keep your fingers nicely out of the way. Now you can check the square off the reference that you used on the back. You tell me. I think you can see on that, that's a very square cut. So it cuts square, but is it really good? Is it really something that every beginner should have in their workshop? Well, in truth, I don't like how hard it is to get the wings out. I feel like I'm pulling using the rail 
and I feel that's going to knock it out square if I'm not careful. But I like it when they're out, so I'll let them off. I like the clips, they're a safety feature and I appreciate that. As for the mitre gauge, well, it feels like this is as good as the setup you put into it. So I certainly wouldn't be relying off the lines that are on the side. I don't think if you line it up with the 45 that you are guaranteed to get a 45 degree cut. What I would suggest is everything you reference, reference off the cut lines. That's the true line your blade's going down. So you could take the angle between the mitre gauge and the, and the cut line and that's going to give you a far more accurate setup. If you need to cut a lot, maybe you're doing picture frames, you need a lot of mitres, absolutely set it up for 45 and rattle them off. However, when you use it, you do lose a little bit of the back of the depth here. And remember your circular source starts here, so it, it really isn't gonna work for wider boards. But so far, if it cuts well on the 45, I think I can get past that. So let's test it out. That's not too bad. There's not a massive amount of reference range on this star at square. You've only got a little bit there. What I would suggest is a better way is take two longer pieces, say 10 inches, 15 inches and thinner, and then join them together into a right angle and test the right angle. If the right angle is a true 90, which you've got a lot more reference point on most of these adjustable squares, then you're good to go. Will I be using this to cut mitres for 45s? Maybe, but it will take a lot of tuning in first, I think. I mean, for those of you interested in exact numbers, the depth of a board that you can cut is around about 42 mil. While you've got no mitre gauge in use, you're looking at coming out maybe 250 mil for the width. However, if we take the mitre gauge and set it to probably the most common of angles, which would be your 45, suddenly you're reduced to somewhere in the region of, I'd say 180 mil. That is the widest board that you're gonna be able to cut on a 45. And that might hold you back, or you might not need to worry about it at all. So, Overall, this is a very, very good piece of kit. And while I've been filming this video, I've actually been making some boxes that need a lot of repeatable cuts on fairly small stock. And it's been faultless. Let's be honest. It's not going to mean you never have to get a table saw. But while you are starting out and while you are getting used to woodworking and learning to use this, learning to do everything that it is capable of while not losing accuracy, this is perfect. It's fairly inexpensive. I'll pop a link in the description for it if you're looking at getting something like this for yourself. And to be honest with you, I do wish that I'd found it at the very start of my journey. While you are learning woodworking, the better results you get, the more confidence you're going to gain. This hobby has the potential to be so much fun and the results you can get with minimal tools will astonish you if you just add a few bits and bobs in to help you along the way. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Anybody who is just getting started in woodworking, who is watching this video and is, is wondering where to go next, check out some of the beginner videos that are on the site. I've got a good one there for you. And anybody else, if you've liked this, I think you're gonna like this video. I'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.